so uh, for the purpose of this call we are going to focus on distance uh, learning strategies because what we have understood from our brief the last time was that you would specifically want to understand how can you continue learning in the context of higher education in haryana we would like to start with the platform that we offer the platform that we offer is free of cost it's called g suite for education and uh, this has unlimited drive storage this has been available globally to all education institutions we have over 80 million users using g suite for education and i'm sure with these unexpected closures because of covid 19 the value of an online learning environment that provides unlimited drive and free of cost is actually even heightened so what we are actually trying to do through this call is also to get you familiar with what this environment is but please remember that as we go through the platform uh, it is very very important for you to understand what would you need to set up uh, as phase 1 for yourselves how many students and teachers or faculty would you need to reach uh, in the immediate so i would request as a department at the end of the call if you could give us very concrete answers in terms of what is your phase 1 set how many colleges how many faculty in those colleges how many students in those colleges and what type of connectivity is available and when i say connectivity i would want or access i would want more data in terms of the kind of internet bandwidth that is available as also the amount of access devices because this is all going to go online which means students as well as faculty and it administrators would need access devices so with that i'm just going to hand over to my colleagues for g suite for education deep dive right so thank you bani so i'll just uh, sh share the next slide uh, i have also shared these points and these steps where you can actually go online and sign up for g suite for education so there are three steps the first link itself is to fill in the details to register for g suite for education the second link is to verify the domain and the third thing when the domain is verified you just have to sign up a request to upgrade the g suite for education as soon as the request is done you will get access to all the tools comes under g suite for education so these are a few steps i have already shared on the email i have also shared a video which will help you you know to uh, to see the steps how you can actually go ahead and sign up for g suite for education and if you face any difficulty please let us know i'll be happy to help on that so i'm going to uh, add that as a department you need to help and set up help yourselves and set up the uh, domain as well as your accounts google for education is there to support you but it will have to be led at the department level so our recommendation would be that a core group of it as well as faculty and those who understand the online learning environment in terms of content and dissemination should be formed at the haryana higher education department and we can then give you a lot of online material as also uh, there are videos that are available to create accounts and go live but that action has to be at the department level yeah over to you vinod all right so next slide i have cashius online so he will help us with this right. sure uh, thanks vinod uh, vinod if you could please go back to the previous uh, slide in the in the portfolio of the products okay sure yeah i think i think we can touch some uh, time on this which is there uh, so g suite uh, as a platform uh, consists of multiple uh, products and applications and it caters to different needs within the uh, schools depending on the staff depending on the students uh, which is there and so we have four five pillars over here so we have something on collaboration the first pillar which is primarily around where you want to have a real time collaboration between students and between staff and students for example you are working on a document and in the document you want to share the document with somebody and you want to have visibility in terms of what's happening real time both of them putting inputs on that so docs is one format where you can create that documents and share content and also put in some comments get in some approvals in the documents uh, the next in that is presentations or slides uh, so if your uh, students definitely want as part of the project work they would want to showcase their work you can use presentations you can create uh, different chart different graphs you can create different themes uh, you can create different images in 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 presentation or slides uh, then we have a uh, uh, drive drive is nothing but a storage repository uh, so any content that you want to store uh, either via the classroom interface 
or separately via the dry interface you can store that content into your drive and it can include any files either the google native files like docs sheets and slides or any pdfs any uh, office documents any text files uh, any images any drawings all of that can re uh, reside in this content called as google drive and it does have a uh, certain levels of permissions uh, sharing controls so it ensures that you can define like view only mode uh, write mode uh, owner mode all those uh, restrictions are there in place uh, depending on the requirements uh, i go to the next second pillar uh, which is uh, something where you want to take a, a scribe on something you just want to make a rough notes on something and you don't want to have like a formal formal document which is there so google keep uh, provides that uh, platform it's similar to post it notes but it's in a digital format uh, which allows you to take some notes once you have the notes scribbled over here you can save the keep into a google doc format which then evolves and then you can share that with multiple people uh, the blue icon over here is calendar i think everyone will be familiar with calendar it's no different it's more for scheduling meetings uh, looking up for resources uh, booking classrooms booking let's say projectors which is there uh, calendar can be used uh, as a tool for that the third one uh, is uh, we have classroom which is there uh, which is which is the entry point uh, in in a classroom environment or a student faculty environment and that's your place where you can define assignments which is there you can define grading which is there but all of that content is ultimately re residing in my google drive but this will be of course heavily used classroom and i'm sure later on there'll be sessions around classroom in terms of how do you use this more interactively which is there uh, then we have forms uh, forms uh, is is primarily used for surveys. Uh, so if you want to take a poll or you want to create a quiz, you want to do an assessment uh, for students, which is there, in uh, and you create you create like a one, two, three, four, five questionnaire. Uh, you send that uh, questionnaire back to the uh, students. The students fill in the responses. The responses automatically collate into a, a spreadsheet document. Uh, that spreadsheet document uh, shows you the responses along with it also doing some analytics in terms of showing you some uh, graph uh, bar charts or some pie charts in terms of what was the top response low response uh, how much response we have got or not which is there so so that is automatically calculated because of the google ml engine in place uh, then we move on to more real-time face-to-face communications uh, so while we can do a lot of collaboration on docs and sheets and slides, but if you want to have a personal touch, uh, then we have video conferencing, uh, which is right now what we all are right now using, where we can uh, present the slide, we can also see our faces, we can also do screen sharing, which is there, uh, we can dial out numbers, uh, all of that is possible with the Hangouts Meet uh, video conferencing. Uh, and here, the at the rate icon is is a part of video conferencing, which is called as Hangouts Chat. So, if you want to create your own chat groups, either a one to one chat, or you want to have a group chat, or let's say you want to create different rooms, so you want to create classroom one, classroom two, or, or classroom three, or maybe you want to create different by subjects rooms, so you can create different rooms, and then the students can either chat among themselves, which is there, or they can uh, chat uh, with the uh, faculty as such. So, those different formulations can be formed. Gmail, I think yeah, I'm not going to uh, into much of it, but yeah, Gmail, as everyone knows, uh, is used for mail communication. And the last piece is, is what is, is manages the entire piece of this. So we, 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 as the IT team, you want to define your services, which have to be turned on and off. Uh, you want to define your policies. You want to define who has control over what. You want to define your admin levels. Uh, that is the admin console. Uh, we know if you could please go to the, uh, yeah, the one after this as well. Uh, yes. Sorry. Sujata, yeah, go ahead. One other important point in all these uh, apps or services that you've seen is, all of them are web-based services. All you need is a browser and nothing else, nothing to install on the laptop or a desktop. Uh, and uh, just as the name suggests, it is mail.google.com, task.google.com, sheets.google.com. So very simple URLs that you need to use on your browser in order to get started with accessing them or using them for your end, end users. Yeah. yeah, and I would also add to Sujata that uh, as a department, uh, G Suite for Education domain as well as data is owned by the department. Um, so you would have to manage it. You would only you are the only ones who will have access to it. And there will be policy controls that you could actually hand over either at the college level or at the faculty level. But it will all be uh, owned and driven by the department. 
Yes. Uh, over to you, Cassius. Uh, any questions? Should we just pause for any questions? Any, anybody? No, I think first uh, we'll let you continue. Okay. And then we'll have like a Q&A at the end. Yeah. Okay. And I also okay. want to do a quick uh, check if you would prefer that we do English and Hindi or English works for everybody. I think English works for everybody. Perfect. Thank you. Yeah, back to okay. you. All right. Thank you. Uh, so, so, so now, let, now let's say you have set up the uh, your domain, which is there. You have signed up for G Suite for Education. You now have access to the admin console. And the, the, the first step primary would be is to of create your users or create the admin users first, which is there. And the next step would be is to create the, your, your user accounts for your staff and for your students. But primarily we recommend is that first let's design an OU structure. And these are some, some examples from the experience that Google has been working with the education sector in terms of there are two ways of how you go about it. The first way is a very simple OU structure if it's just one school, which is there. So you have your domain, your main domain name, which is there, which comes as default when you purchase G for education. And then within that, you define an OU structure. And OU structure is nothing but a group. Uh, it's, uh, the full form is organizational unit, but we can call it as a group. You're, you define your group based on your profiles. And in a school working environment, you'll have a, either have a staff or faculty, and you'll have a student. And under the staff, these are some, some particular departments that you can then create sub-OUs or call as child OUs, which is there. Similarly for students, depending on their year of graduation, which is there or, the, or, or which class they are, you can again create child OUs for each of the parent student OU, which is there. Then comes uh, suspended. Now suspended is primarily because we have uh, students that may come in and then they may, they may go out, which is there, or they may leave and you may no longer need them to have access to the environment. Uh, so in, in that scenario, what you can do is you can move the users from the students OU into the suspended OU. So this ensures that they don't have any access of any mail, Gmail, calendar, while the account is still active, but they can log in as such and do any activity as such. And last is, before you want to roll, roll this out to everybody, you want to ensure that uh, everything is working fine in terms of policies are set properly, the services are working fine, there is no issue. So it's like a, it's like a pilot group, and that pilot group can be put into a test OU you to test any things, uh, so because Google releases updates and new features almost on a weekly, monthly basis. And so, uh, you want to ensure that there's enough testing so there is no surprise coming in. So maybe you can put that in a test OU, a test account, test that, see how that works, uh, create your your your, doc your documents. Once everything is ready, then you can move them from the test OU back to the uh, relevant OU that they are there. This is this is one approach where you have a simple single school. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, uh, this is where if, if there are you want to go more granular and you have you, there are either multiple schools or you have a different class classes which is there. And of course, you will have a primary again, same for the faculty, the staff, a one single OU structure. But then for each of the schools, you can defi define into either a primary school, a secondary school. And within the primary and secondary school, you can have the school name, which is there. And within that, you can have the classes and the graduation year. The rest remain the same as there. But these are commonly OU structures that we have used. Uh, it's free for you all to set up your own and customize this. It's not like a mandate, which is there. But th that's how we have seen which, is, which happens. And any questions if uh, there is on this? But these are the slides that we were going to talk about. And I think then we'll get into showcasing the, the admin console, that because that's the place where things will happen. Yeah, I, I would again add, uh, just before we take a question, that in the context of uh, the higher education department, what you would have to think about as the core team would be that uh, who all have to go live uh, in the in the phase one, and then you can divide them at the central domain as the higher education domain, and you can then give subdomains to your colleges. It can happen centrally or it can happen at the college level, but I would say at times like these, it is best managed centrally. Uh, so you would be able to create domains at a college level and give them administrative rights uh, at the college level, but having created those uh, at the central domain itself. Uh, and then you will have to individually plan at the department as well as the college level that how many G Suite IDs to faculty and students uh, will need to be given. So that is the broad structure. And of course, we'll deep dive into best practices with you. <laughs>